Hey everybody, it's time for another thing a week. Well, the last chance archery thing when we get a chance, but we're still gonna call it a thing a week. I know some of you people have been so exact with maybe you shouldn't call it thing a week anymore. You know what? I'm calling it thing a week because I'm trying to be positive here and we're gonna make some videos. Anyway, today I'm gonna talk about stabilizers. Often people are confused about exactly what it is that stabilizers do. They try to use stabilizers to winch their form back into shape. Like if their bow is canting, they say, oh, I need to add a little more weight over here. So stabilizers aren't designed to actually move your bow to a new place. Stabilizers are there to help your bow be still. A couple of things about stabilizer bars. A good stabilizer bar is rigid. It's as light as air and that gets the weight far away from your bow so that you can have a higher moment of inertia. Moment of, moment of inertia is an object's, the measure of an object's resistance to rotation. And we all know that an archery mistake pretty much is translated into rotation. So we want the bow to be, far, we want the weight to be far away from the bow. And I also like to have the weight package as small as possible so I don't have all of that out there in the wind. So instead of having uh, 12 ounces that is this long with the standard stackable steel weights, I use these tungsten weights from Last Chance Archery. And uh, what makes these things great is I can just slide those onto the threaded rod just like a standard weight, except I don't have to worry about stacking the weights and getting the rod just right without having a piece of rod sticking out of the weight or that sort of thing. It's a smooth through hole, so you see that they're loose. So I can stack as many as I want on the threaded rod and then just screw that in and tighten it up. So each one of these is three ounces and uh, Last Chance also makes uh, cakes just like these in half ounce. So if you wanna make some uh, lighter adjustments for the fit and feel of the bow, you can use those half ounce pieces, but you still, this is 12 ounces of weight here. So instead of it being that long, it's a quarter of the size of regular steel weights. And I don't have any scientific proof, but I feel like the weight package being much smaller, I feel like I'm more steady. Anyway, more about stabilizers here. So many people will say that if your bow has a tendency to be out of level in this way, that you move your bar out or you add more weight to the back of your bar, that's not true. It's actually a form flaw that causes your bow to be out of level. Watch this. So we'll use this as representative of my bow and I'm back here at full draw and you see it's straight up and down. Now watch this. If I just raise my front shoulder slightly, you see how that angle changes? That's what makes my bow have that natural cant to the right. But if I just relax that position, it goes back to straight without changing my wrist at all. I can change the cant of the bow. Now some people, it's somewhat rare, but some people have a problem with it canting the other way, this way, and that's when they overly activate these lap muscles right here. So they start to draw and they go like this. So when I relax that lap muscle and let it go back to a normal position, it's straight up and down. So you can see how that works. Now, why do we have this back bar? The back bar with the extra weight on there is not to keep the bow level, it's to add a little bias to how we hold the bow. It does two things. This back bar offsets the leverage of the front bar. So I take a 30 inch bar here and put 12 ounces out on the end, right? So then I have a 15 inch bar back here with the right amount of weight to offset the leverage of the front bar. So the weight out sticking out front doesn't just run away with me, right? So let's assume that this is dead in line and straight in line with the bow. That would give me a really good zero balance if I use this calculation. In order to get a good zero balance, the starting point for that is you take the length of your front rod times the weight. That'll give you inch 
ounces. Then divide by the length of your rear bar and the answer that you get is the amount of weight that you put on the back bar. That way you have a good starting point so that you have a really good balance for the leverage. Now there's all sorts of gimbal mounted bench vices and things like that that you can clamp the bow in and you can set the bow at a dead zero balance so that it's perfect outside of your hand. That works just fine, uh, but it doesn't allow the bow to have any kind of bias against aiming. So a bow that's perfectly balanced is easily moved in any direction. So you'll find that if you were aiming at full draw and you notice that your sight pin is going left, right, left, right, left, right, like that through the middle of the target, it's really because the bow top is going left, right, left, right. So your bow may be dead zero balanced, but by moving this stabilizer bar just a little bit out from dead center, I can add a little bit of bias over here so I'm holding against the bow in just one direction. So when I use a tiny bit of muscle energy to hold in that one direction, I only have to control the bow in one plane instead of both planes. So that way it helps me hold the bow still with the least amount of muscle energy involved. So if the bow has a tendency to bounce high, you can add a little more to the front. If the bow has a tendency to bounce low, now granted, I'm saying bounce low, so it'll fall and come right back tiny bit, just outside the 10 ring, not dip bang, right? Just bounce low outside the middle or kind of just has a tendency to go low like this, right? You can reduce the amount of weight on the front. So by working with that, you can create your own aiming bias in the bow, front to back and side to side, so that you can use the least amount of muscle energy to keep the bow still. So with that, your bow will be steady aiming. And one final tip. When you're setting up draw length, checking your form, making sure that your torso is in the right position, making sure your hands are relaxed, running down any kind of form problem, take all the weight off of the ends of your bars. So you can see the raw stability that your form creates for you with your bow. Then adjust draw length, adjust the softness of your hands, adjust how you're holding your shoulders at full draw until you get the best and most stable behavior out of your bow. Then you can bring the weight of the bow up ever so slightly so you can watch and be very close so you can see the point where the stability of the bow breaks because you have weight in the wrong place or you have too much overall weight or whatever. So that way you can tune yourself first, then use the weights to do the job that they're made to do and that's to create forgiveness. You're basically raising the forgiveness factor of your bow by putting the weight out away from your bow so that it will help you absorb those tiny little errors that you can't feel so that the mistake is just on the line of the X rather than a half an inch outside of the X. So double check your stabilizers, stay tuned, more thing a week's coming, though they may not be every week.